Good morning, Newark Academy. It is Friday, April 24th. It is a day five. I am your host, Rachel Shapiro Cooper, and this is SGN. N-A. We would be remiss if we did not thank Mr. John Krasinski, who started this kooky craze, spreading good news on our darkest days. Let's dive right in, shall we? 3D printing. What is it? Why? Let's go to our very own Stella Gilbert, who has gone to college a little bit early, to interview our alum, Emily Labden. Take it away, Stella. I'm here with Emily Labden, who is in the Newark Academy class of 2016. Emily is graduating from Marist College this year and has been doing some amazing things helping those on the front lines. So what have you been up to, Emily? Hi, Stella. So basically, I've been up to a lot of 3D printing. Um, I'm still in school right now. I'm still a senior at Marist College. I'll be graduating this year, so I'm doing my last three classes. Virtual learning, just like all of you guys. It's been difficult. Um, but basically, I've been making some things to help out healthcare workers, which is really great um, and rewarding for me because I like being able to know that I'm helping other people. Um, so some of the things I've been making is like mask clips that help relieve discomfort for when you are wearing a face mask, um, which a lot of people wear for like hours and days on end. Um, I've been making face shields. So they just protect from like germs coming at your face. And then, this is just fun. Um, it's like a door grabber, so you don't have to touch the door when you're opening things and trying to go places if you have to go grocery shopping and whatnot. So I do a lot of like design and accessories and just products in general. So I learned about 3D modeling through a design lens. And basically, I just kind of went from there. And I really learned a lot about how the 3D modeling works and how the machines work. Um, and then once I ended up getting my own printer, which was actually for business purposes, um, I realized that I had an opportunity to help others. So I found these files that were Creative Commons files. Um, so none of these I've actually created myself. Um, I've printed them. Um, my designs are more fashion and technical, um, but these were basically just online. So I figured why don't I just print them and try to give them out to people who need them. Yeah, that's awesome. And I heard you were working with a fellow NA alum. You were connected somehow. Can you talk about this? Yeah, so there is a fellow NA alum. Her name is Ruth, and she works at St. Joseph's Hospital. And um, she was working with a lot of nurses, and they were talking to me about the discomfort that they were feeling about wearing face masks for such a long time. So I'm shipping out a bunch of face clips, face mask clips to them. Um, so hopefully I'll have that done by the end of this week. The machine has been running nonstop, as you can see, it's still running now, so a lot of hard work, um, but I'm just grateful that I'm you know, be able to help out anyone that I can, especially in the NA network. Yeah, that's really cool. So have you been working on anything else besides this? Yeah, so actually the 3D printing, um, there's been a lot of you know printing for relief for the pandemic, but I'm also working on a business plan. Um, that would be 3D printing sustainable trends and findings for fashion, auto, tech, and medical industries. And what we're doing is we're taking shredded water bottles and discarded plastic, and we're making our own filament out of it, which looks like this. Um, it's basically whatever color, depending on what material you put into it. And what we do with the filament is we print things like zippers or buckles or rivets or I could print the face mask on here. Anything you need for any industries. So it's a business plan that would help um, industries become more sustainable using 3D printing and recycled plastic. We just won second place um, in the regional New York business plan competition, and we're moving on to the New York state business plan competition in May, and we're hoping to get some investment money for the business startup. So it's really exciting. Oh, that's amazing. Thank you so much. Do you have any words that you want to say for the NA community listening to this? Yes. Um, I loved Norwich Academy. I had such a great time. If I could go back, I could. Um, enjoy your time at Norwich Academy. Cherish every moment, even though it's virtual. The memories are still there. So really live it up. And they prepared me so much for college. And I hope that it prepares all of you for college. And really take everything that you're learning to heart and just have a great time. Thank you so much. This is Stella from the field and back to you.
Thank you, Stella. That was incredible. I wonder if we have any folks in our very own backyard doing the same thing. Can you tell us about that, Stella? Back to you. So what I've been doing is printing out these kind of headbands. And then, so I print out a lot of these. And then I turn them over to a guy in the next town who puts the plastic face shield piece on. And then I think maybe he hot glues a little bit. And then also he does the, the elastic that goes, that would go behind your head. So I've done, I've been working on these for couple weeks um, and I think that the group I'm not the only one 3d printing but I've got uh, two of the printers from school here and I printed out over a hundred of these things and uh, this actually tomorrow I'm going back to school to get a couple more printers and more plastics so that I can print even more even faster uh, so that's what I've been doing um, in between my zoom classes and now we're getting requests. I don't know if we'll do it. We're getting requests from dentists and, and other uh, health practitioners also who are interested because they can't get these things otherwise. Yeah, that's awesome. Is anyone in your family involved with making masks? Uh, with making these masks? No, but uh, I know that Tess and you too, right? We're doing this, uh, sewing the cloth masks. Um, uh, so that was Tess, Collins, you know, um, but Tess was doing that with, I think, you and Melanie and Penelope. Yeah. So what motivated you to do this? Well, just because there's a need for it. And um, it was something that, that I was good enough that I, we had the material for. And school was happy uh, to donate the materials. I'm very thankful for that uh, to Mr. Austin and Mr. Goldfisher and Ms. Holm. Um, and I'll really the whole science department for um, stepping up like this. Well, thank you so much, Mr. Kessler. That was fantastic. Keep up the great work, folks. Now to switch gears for something that pulls on your heartstrings. Let's take it away to senior correspondent Lily Rosenberg telling us what you can do in your very own home. Take it away, Lily. Across the country, millions of shelters have been basically empty because people are taking this time to foster or adopt a dog or cat. So I have some videos that I'm going to be showing you of members of the NA community and basically just explaining the importance of considering adopting or fostering during this hard time. Well, we've been thinking about getting a second dog for a long time and we decided that rescuing a dog was the right thing to do. And given that so many people are giving up dogs right now because they can't take care of them because they're in hospitals or, you know, have lost their jobs and just can't afford them, we thought that this was a really good time to adopt a dog. Hi, happy to be here as part of NA's good news segment talking about animal rescue. I'm here with my pug, Raz, who was one of my fosters. Fostering dogs is super easy. You have to love the dog. You have to be patient. And something that we all have right now, you need some free time. If anybody has any interest in, in fostering, you don't have to wait for a pandemic. It's great to do over summer vacation or even spring break. So just get in touch with your local rescue or your local shelter who can set you up with everything you need to help save a dog's life. Oh, isn't that so cute? It makes me want to run out and adopt one right now. And thanks to Miss Barbara Sign from our Office of Institutional Advancement that shows us that if you have love, which we all have, and you have time, which we all have, you can do just fine. Now to our sports desk and our own Jeffrey Keys with an exclusive interview. Take it away, Jeffrey. Hi everyone, I'm here with a New York Academy alum, 
2016 Gatorade New Jersey Girls Basketball Player of the Year, 2019 to 2020 KYAO Award recipient. Please welcome the newest member of the New York Liberty, Jocelyn Willoughby. Hi, Jocelyn. Hi, thank you so much. No problem. It's great to see you. Same. <laughs> so last Friday, last Friday night, you were selected 10th overall in the 2020 WNBA draft. You actually had a bit of a viral moment. Um, your reaction <laughs> <laughs> was deemed very wholesome. And I have to agree, very wholesome reaction. Could you tell us in that moment, once you heard your name call, called, what, what was going through your head? Yeah, I, um, it was just kind of like, wow, as I said, eventually when I could get the words out. Um, but to, for me to have gotten to that moment, um, not always knowing that, or, you know, not always envisioning that that would be the outcome of my college career, but um, over time, gaining more confidence and working towards that. Um, and just, you know, after making that commitment to myself that I would be drafted and that's that was my goal and I would work to that, finally hearing that it happened, um, was just really excited. And um, yeah, and then after being traded, just even more excited to be able to come back home, um, play for a young program, for a new coach, and just uh, at a moment where there's so much excitement and momentum around that program. Yeah, we were so excited to hear that you're coming back home. We were so thrilled. Um, could you talk about how Newark Academy has helped you on this path? Yeah, so Newark Academy, um, you know, that's that's been kind of my staple, going to an institution like, like similar to UVA, that um, I could grow and flourish, um, both academically and athletically. I think, you know, Newark Academy prepared me so well for college to have a pretty smooth transition. Um, both on and off the court and just the amount of work that she, that I had to put in the discipline that I had to develop at Newark Academy definitely translated, um, into who I was and what I was able to accomplish at UVA. I think, um, from the basketball standpoint, Newark Academy gave me a situation where I had to become more versatile, um, and being comfortable handling the ball, also shooting, posting up and doing some of the things that, um, I've grown and developed more um, on, at, well, developed more at UVA. Um, and that I think ultimately allowed me to be a um, first round draft pick this year. You know, a lot of uh, coaches and scouts are talking about my versatility um, in addition to, you know, my aggression, my physical build, and those other um, things I bring to the court. But uh, just so thankful for Coach Bona and all my teammates at North Academy. and. Um, professors and teachers as well and just how they all been so crucial in shaping and in, in my um, development and growth over the years. Well, thank you so much. This has been an honor to be able to catch up with you. Everyone at Newark Academy is so inspired by you. Um, we are so grateful that you took the time to talk with us and we are so excited to watch you shine here in New York. Thank you so much. Well, thank you. I'm hoping to um, be able to come back and visit, you know, home for spring break but the pandemic hit so that kind of um, changed plans at this point but hopefully sometime in the future I'll be able to come back and um, see you all in person yeah stay stay well stay healthy and uh, just know that we'll always be cheering you on thank you thank, thank you, you so much really appreciate it and with that Ms. Shapiro Cooper back to you how about those hoops no, in all seriousness, no. In all seriousness, Jocelyn, congratulations. We are so happy for you. Welcome home. Well deserved, well earned, and we cannot wait to see you on campus and on the court very soon. I forgot, I forgot my watch, but I do know that we have run out of time. Our first episode of SGNNA. Thank you all for tuning in. And if you have some good news, please send it to us at sgn at newarka.edu and you could see yourself on an episode of SGNNA very soon. Have a wonderful weekend and please remember to take care of yourself and each other. As we exit, let's look into the world of extreme sports from the basement of our very own Rahul Lal.
Bye, everyone. Bye. <laughs>